Dear colleagues, this is a posterior polar cataract along with a hard brown nucleus. Let me show you how I managed this case. By this time all the incisions have been made. Now I am going to inject a big air bubble in the anterior chamber. Now tripan blue dye is being used to stain the anterior capsule so that Rexis becomes easy. The dye is washed out. In this case, I want to do a Rexis of about 5.5 millimeter size. I don't want to make a very large Rexis because I know I there can be PC rent and I may have to place a lens in the sulcus. And if the Rexis is about 5 millimeter, then optic capture will be easy. Here I am just raising a flap of anterior capsule. I hold this flap with a uterata forceps and I am trying to make a rexis of about 5 millimeter or between 5 and 5.5 millimeter. Hope this is a rexis of adequate size. And now I am going to do sculpting first in this case because the nucleus is hard brown, there is hardly any epinucleus. So I want to sculpt and I want to find out the margin of the epinucleus and then do hydrodissection at multiple points. I got this idea from Dr. Ramakrishna recently. So here I am, I am doing some sculpting. I want to get an edge for hydrodissection. So I am going a bit deeper. In this case, though it was not much, not clearly visible through the microscope, but on slit lamp, I knew that this case is going to have PC rent. So I am very cautious in this case. So I have gone to a deeper level. Now I come out and now I am going to inject BSS, little bit of BSS at multiple point. This is HPMC and here is hydrodissection at multiple points underneath the epinucleus. I'm raising the epinucleus like this and doing a bit of hydrodissection at multiple points. So this is a good idea which I got from Dr. Ramakrishna recently and I am employing the technique in this case. So hydrodissection is done. Now I am going to do the case as if hydrodissection has not been done. I am not going to rotate the nucleus at this moment. Just this is a chop at 5.30 o'clock and I hold it here and this is a chop at 3 o'clock and this nuclear fragment I want to take out. Now I rotate the tip of the FACO handpiece, engage it here and this is the 8 o'clock job.
and this nuclear fragment is taken out and now I see that the nucleus is rotating. So I try to remove the nucleus and keep the epinucleus but here I'm trying to remove the nucleus but the epinucleus also the epinucleus is saved. Okay. Now here I separate the epinucleus and and see what happens. The whole epinucleus came first and here I see that the PC rent has already occurred. So I take this nuclear fragment here and try to emulsify this. Fortunately the anterior vitreous face is still intact and the vitreous is not in the anterior chamber. So I inject viscoelastic substance. This is HPMC and take out the FECO handpiece. And now I'm going to use viscoat. This is viscoat expressed out some HPMC depressing the posterior leap of the main incision. Injected viscoat to seal the PC rent. And I want to see if I can emulsify this epinuclear piece. The viscoat has nicely plugged the rent and now here it is. I go at in FECO3 that is epinuclear mode of Oatly FECO machine. FECO power is only 20%, flow rate is 30 and vacuum is 250. And now I want to inject some more viscoat and I want to bring the other epinuclear piece towards the center yes I am mobilizing this and I make it free yes the epinucleus is now free so I inject some more viscoat underneath this epinuclear plate and seal the rent again. So the viscoat has got nice ability to plug the PC rent. This is a quite large rent but it is being nicely plugged by viscoat. One more reason maybe I am lucky to have solid vitreous in this case. Here it is. The epinuclear plate came out and the viscoat is still plugging the posterior capsule. Now I inject again some more viscoat and try to remove the cortical matter with Simco cannula. I want to see if I can do that. Now here it is. I can very easily remove the cortical matter and the viscoat is still keeping the vitreous behind my working area. And here it is, there's some strand is uh, at the port. So what I do is I 
ask my assistant to inject some VS code and I come out. That stand is actually a stand of posterior capsule, it's not vitreous. And I could complete removal of cortex by Simco cannula without disturbing the anterior vitreous phase. Now I inject viscote again and I am going to implant a multipiece intraocular lens in the sulcus. In this case, I want to enlarge the main incision by 0 0.2 millimeter and I want to use B cartridge of Alcon and use Acris of multipiece intraocular lens in this case. So here I am, I am enlarging the main incision a little bit would point to millimeter or so. And this, this is the multipiece intraocular lens. It is being loaded in the cartridge and I push it. Now see what happens when I push the piston. It pushes the haptic. So I lift this haptic with a Sinsky hook and I ask my assistant to advance the piston like this. And this is a nice technique. If we don't do this, we are going to damage the trailing haptic. Now here I am, I am going to implant this multipiece hydrophobic intraocular lens in the sulcus. And here it is. Go rotate the cartridge clockwise and I see that the leading haptic is going into the sulcus. As it goes I rotate the cartridge anticlockwise and the nuclear the lens is supported by the chopper. I take a Macpherson's forceps and I place the trailing haptic in the sulcus. So both the haptics are in the sulcus at this moment. The anterior vitreous face is intact and the lens is nicely placed. And now I am going to remove the viscoelastic substance that is viscoat from the anterior chamber. And the vis viscoat is coming out nicely. Though I was quite sure that vitreous and vitreous face is intact and it has not been disturbed. I confirmed it by using a bit of triamcinolone acetate in this case. So I am removing all the waistcoat from the entry chamber and it is coming from the from behind the lens also a lot of viscose is coming and it appears fine now so the case is nicely done now i'm going to confirm that there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber. First I 
inject a bit of air I'm not yeah I'm not using air just injecting the times known acetate at two three points and now I'm going to wash it out and see if there is any vitreous in the antechamber or not yes as I thought there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber whatever little bit of viscose is there behind the eye well that will get absorbed I may have to use some anti-glaucoma medications for a week or so and now I have used pilocarpine to constrict the people I hydrate the side port and conclude the case so I was lucky enough in this case not to have nucleus drop and manage the case nicely. Hope this video will help you in your practice. Thank you very much for your attention.